Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to shoot time lapses using the Sony RX100 Mark 7. It's probably a very similar process among most Sony cameras, but yeah, I do have the RX100 Mark 7, so I'm gonna show you how to do it on that. I'm gonna get straight into it, so I don't waste your time, but one thing I just wanna say is the camera doesn't actually compile the time lapse for you. You actually have to grab all the photos the camera's taken and then put them in some software to turn it into an actual time lapse. So I believe the Sony Imaging Edge software does that, but I'll be using Premiere. I'm gonna show you how to put it all together, but I'll be using Premiere, but you can probably use different software. Um, most editing software should be able to do that, but basically this tutorial is gonna be how to actually do it on the camera, and then, yeah, I'm gonna be doing the actual, putting it together in Premiere. So, hope you enjoy, let's get started. Okay, so I actually decided to film this part of the tutorial inside. It's really, really windy outside, so the audio was gonna be terrible. So I'll show you the steps to actually do the time-lapse, but when it comes time for me to do my time-lapse, I will do that outside, and I'll show you the footage I got for that. But yeah, it's just really, really windy, so uh, you wouldn't have heard anything with the microphone and stuff like that. I've also got tradesmen working next door, and they're really loud, so. Um, yeah, basically what you want to do, I'm going to be in manual mode for this. You can use any of the other modes, but for time lapses, manual mode is the best because um, it stops you from getting flicker and the settings from changing throughout uh, the time lapse. So what you want to do is just tap the menu button there and you want to go up to the first, whoops, too far, uh, the first menu there and then scroll across until you see interval shoot funk, which is interval shoot function interval shooting, turn that on. Make sure you turn this off if you're just gonna be taking normal photos or videos. Um, it's weird how it's kind of hidden in the menu like this, but it's just the way it is. Uh, shooting start time is when you want the time lapse to start. So one second basically means it'll start straight away. If you want it to start later, you can do that by minutes and seconds, but I'll just start, do it so it starts in one second. Shooting interval is how often you want it to take a photo. So with this, it's gonna take a photo every five seconds. So I suggest the faster that something's moving in your time lapse, the shooting interval should be lower, but if it's like clouds and things like that, five seconds is pretty good. Um, but if you're trying to get more action in, then yeah, go a lower number, like one or two seconds or something like that. Number of shots is just how many shots you want the camera to take, and it'll tell you how long down here um, the whole time ups will take to actually take all those photos. So if you want, let's just say you want 100 photos, it's gonna take eight minutes and 15 seconds for the time ups to complete. Um, so I'll probably go with that. Now keep in mind, you have to realize how many frames per second you're gonna be editing in. So in Australia, we pretty much use 25 frames per second as a standard. So with 100 shots, that means the end of our time lapse will be four seconds, because 100 divided by 25, so 25, 50, 75, 100, that gives you 100 shots and 25 frames per second, you end up with the number four. So that means that the time lapse is gonna play for four seconds when it's actually finished. If we half press the shutter button, we'll now be back here, so we're gonna adjust our settings just to get the exposure right. So let me pull down the ISO. Let's go like 320 or something. Now I can lift the shutter speed up a little bit or slow it down, I should say, to get the right exposure. So somewhere around there, there's nothing really going on in this scene, so it's a bit boring and it's hard to see what I'm doing, but it's in manual, I've set the exposure correctly. Now I'm gonna set the focus here to manual. And it looks like what I want to be in focus is in focus because I've got my focus peaking on. And then you're just gonna press the shutter button and there you go. It'll start the time-lapse. And as you can see, there is a message that pops up saying you can cancel the time-lapse by pressing the shutter button again. Um, or you can just wait till it finishes, obviously. But it's just telling you there that there's a five second interval between photos and that tells you how many photos out of the 100 we have. So it's taken five photos so far and we'll do that all the way up to 100 or whatever number we set. And yeah, so the next step is to put all these together in our editing software, so I'll show you that next. But what I'm gonna do now is go outside and get a time lapse. I just, like I said, I couldn't film out there because it was too loud, you wouldn't have heard anything. So yeah, I'll go out and film mine and then I'll come back in and I'll show you how to put it all together. Okay, so my time lapse is finished. Pretty boring subject, but I just wanted to do this quickly. So here are my 100 photos, and like I said, I'm in Lightroom, so these are the RAW files. I'm gonna work with the RAW files to get the most out of it. And before I chuck them in Premiere, I'm actually gonna give them a quick edit, and what I'll do is I'll edit one of them and then sync all of the photos together so they've all got the same edit, and then we'll go to Premiere, put them all together, and yeah, just the reason I'm doing this is because you can push and pull uh, a lot more colors and things like that with the RAW files than you can once you've made it into a video type thing. So yeah, I'm gonna quickly give these an edit, sync them all together, and then we'll be ready to throw them into Premiere.
All right, so now I've started a new project. I'm in Adobe Premiere. What we're gonna do is right click in our little media window here and go to import and then find your files. And all you gotta do is click the first one and just make sure image, image sequence, sorry, image sequence here is ticked and that will grab all the images and put them into a sequence. So we're just gonna go open. Remember, you don't have to select them all, just the first one. And as long as the file names are in order, so 58, 59, 60, it's gonna know exactly which one goes after the other. So tap open. That'll go there. Now what we're gonna do is right click here, go modify, interpret footage. And we're gonna assume the frame rate of 25 frames per second. Now this depends in what frames per second you like to work with, but I work with 25. So as you can see, like I spoke about earlier, the duration of this time lapse is gonna be four seconds. So we're gonna click okay. We're gonna drag it over to our timeline here. Now, what I like to do now, it's a bit of a weird shape. It's not going to fit in a proper video. So it's not 1920 by 1080p or it's not 4K either. So I'm going to go to sequence, sequence settings, and we're going to set this here. I want it in 4K, so that's 3840 by 2160. If you're doing 1080p, that's 1920 by 1080, but we're going to make this one 4K. I'm working in 25 frames per second and everything else here is totally fine. Press OK. Now what this is going to do is it's going to actually crop into our image because the photos were bigger than our 4K window. So we're gonna scale out a little bit and you can see what I mean. Computer's running a little bit slow because I'm recording the screen. So that's what the photo looks like, but because it's not gonna fit in this 4K window, we have to actually zoom in a little bit to fill the window. So I'm gonna go somewhere like that. I think it looks good. Set it there. And this should play now, but what I'm gonna do is just render this section out quickly because the computer's struggling a little bit. So I don't think it's gonna play in real time. So I'll just give this a quick, quick render and then I'll show you what it looks like once that's done. Okay, so it's finished rendering, so that means it'll play in real time without any stuttering, hopefully. And let's give it a watch. So it looks pretty cool, and it lasts four seconds, just like I said. Now, you can see there's a little bit of a bump here, and I think that's because, like I said before, it's very, very windy today, and I'm on, I was just on a really crappy tripod, so it's moved around a little bit. So what I'm going to, hey, see a bird there, that's cool. So what I'm going to do is actually apply a warp stabilizer. You won't have to do this if your footage is uh, nice and smooth with no bumps, but I'm going to drag a warp stabilizer on top. And what that does, it stabilizes the footage. So we're just going to have to wait for this to stabilize the footage. And then hopefully it might not get rid of that, but it might be a smoother transition where it did bump. So I'll let this run and then I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so the warp stabilizer has actually finished. Let's give it a play and see what it looks like. Oops, computer started a little bit there. Let's try again. There we go. It actually completely got rid of it. I'm really surprised. I thought it would have been still a little bit of a jump there, but that's absolutely perfect. So that's it. From here, all I do is render it out, and what you get is this. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. As you can tell, it's very, very, very easy to do. Um, just keep in mind that Lightroom thing that I did, that isn't mandatory. You can put your images straight into Premiere and then color grade them if you want in there. I just find that color grading or color correcting and grading the raw files in Lightroom, you just get a little bit more out of it. You can push and pull colors and things a little bit more. And then I put them in Premiere and finish the time lapse. So yeah, it's pretty easy. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, if this video helped you, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you guys soon. Thanks very much for watching. Thank you.